As most people typically do, you don't intentionally enter into compliance. You kind of just find your way in there. And that's exactly what happened to me. I started my career um, after finishing varsity. I joined a law firm, as most people do, um, and started private practice. And I did that for about a year. And then I realized it wasn't really a great fit for me as a person. It wasn't something that really um, felt like it was meant to be what I was doing. And so um, I eventually, um, one sweet day, saw an advert in a newspaper for a graduate trainee program. And I figured, you know, why not? And I left my office in the law firm, um, much to a lot of people's confusion, mind you, but that's typically what I like to do, and ended up joining this graduate trainee program in a financial services company back in Zimbabwe. I think it was about 2006 or so. And joining the program, it was a program where you would just be involved in various parts of the business from HR to working even as a bank teller. And somewhere along the line, the company secretary got wind of the fact that I had a law degree and he invited me to join his team, essentially, um, and assist him. And that is how I started to discover the role of compliance within an organization. So I went from being a graduate trainee to being invited to have my own office and work with him and, you know, become a risk and compliance officer, essentially, and worked with the company secretary and the money laundering reporting officer. And I worked with them on all things compliance. And my law degree in that way came in handy because it allowed me to be drawn into this um, opportunity in the financial services industry. So that goes to show you that, you know, sometimes you take chances, you don't know where it's going to end up, but that is essentially how I ended up in risk and compliance. And I really found my space something that I enjoyed doing, working with the, in the banking financial services sector, and I've been in compliance ever since. And after leaving that role, I moved to a commercial bank in Zimbabwe and was officially appointed as the regulatory affairs manager at the time. And I've built my career in compliance from that point and have never looked back since. What excites me about being a compliance officer is that every day you are faced with a new and different thing to tackle and explore. You get to work with so many different stakeholders within a business, whether you're talking about the operations guys, the product ladies, the technology team, operations, human resources, whatever the case is, you're going to interact with them, which gives you an opportunity to really understand and get involved with the inner workings of a business. And then when there are things like new products, you get to be involved in the launching of that, risk assessing that, making it work better, making sure that the ultimate experience from a customer user perspective is you know treating customers fairly and then you get to see the customers actually using those products and engaging with something that you worked on and helped bring to life so i find that very exciting and compliance as a whole is just a multifaceted career path you can do so many things in compliance you can be a generalist and be involved in everything in, across a line of business. You can be a specialist and focus on things like AML, data, data protection, uh, fraud, sanctions, whatever the case may be. You can choose to be a specialist as well. So there are really so many things that you can do within compliance. And the great thing is that even if you decide to specialize, you're not necessarily locked into that. You can become a generalist afterwards. So your career can be dynamic. You can change lots of opportunities for growth. So I find it really exciting to be in compliance and face challenges. Um, and you will be challenged. You know, BAU is BAU, but there will be problems that you have to think creatively about, solve, come up with solutions that work for the business and stay within the framework of the regulatory requirements. But that's the exciting challenge that you face as a compliance officer. So always a, an exciting career path for anyone to be a part of. Building a successful compliance career requires you to exercise a lot of different muscles and skills 
yes, it's important to have a good foundation when it comes to the technical knowledge, understanding the business that you operate in, the rules and regulations that apply. So that is essentially your foundation. There is no substitute for knowing your business and understanding the regulatory framework. But that's, you need more than that to be able to build a career. So your relationships with your stakeholders, with your peers within the compliance team, your upward management in terms of your relationships with senior people in the business, actively investing and spending time in building relationships is going to serve you extremely well in your compliance career. You can't be in your little glass box and saying, I'm doing my work, I'm being effective, I'm going to be rewarded. Yes, that's great, it's brilliant, do that. But make sure that you're also managing your relationships, engaging with people. Let them know when something is going well. You have to sort of be aware of being your own cheerleader in a lot of situations and being like, I'm working on this project. It's going really well and letting people know how you're performing. So the ability to manage your visibility as well by choosing great products and projects with high visibility and focus of senior management as well is going to help you um, in your career a lot. You don't want to spend 80% of your time working on things that are only going to give you 5 to 20% bang for your buck. You know, so spend a lot of your time working and choosing to be involved in projects that have high visibility. And sometimes it might not necessarily be the most glamorous one, but it's an important project and therefore it's good to be involved in that and make an impact and then people start to, to recognize you for the work that you're producing. And another thing, it's important for you to have a voice in the room. I know it can be scary sometimes to switch your video on and unmute if you're on Teams or Zoom or if you're in the room in person and it's a conference room full of people and you just say, you know what, I have something to share or an opinion or some advice to give, but you really have to have that voice and give that uh, opinion to your stakeholders and make sure that they're aware of what is right and wrong because you are their trusted advisor and they need to know that they can rely on you to give that advice in the circumstances. It's not about being the loudest person in the room. It's about saying what needs to be said when it needs to be said. So don't default to the chat or say, I'll send an email afterwards. Engage with your stakeholders. Be that trusted advisor. There are actually two misunderstandings that actually really kind of bug me a lot. Um, the first of them is that AML compliance is compliance. So many people just default and compliance is broad. There are so many laws and regulations outside of AML compliance that apply to various businesses. And compliance is about comp making sure that you're meeting your obligations and the requirements of all the laws that apply to a particular business and not just AML compliance. But because AML is such an important subject matter, People who are entering the profession of compliance sometimes have this misunderstanding that compliance is AML compliance. So that's one thing that I would like to clear up. The second thing that I need everybody to understand is that building a successful career in compliance goes beyond getting a multitude of certificates. And I've had this conversation with so many people Certificates are excellent. Get educated, get the theoretical knowledge. I am not against certification, but don't rely on that as your core being and have a million certificates, but you actually don't have the capability, the know-how as to how that theoretical knowledge gets applied practically within a business. You still need to know and understand how to take those rules and apply them within a business context. And each business context is going to be unique, so you need to hone that skills. So boys and girls, I will say get your certificates, it's great, but don't rely on those as your sole thing for building a, co a career in compliance. It's not just about certificates. Get experience, get practical knowledge any way that you can. Actually, three things that bug me that are misunderstandings is that lawyers automatically make great compliance officers. 
it's a default setting and belief that some people, whether it's HR or whatever the business has, that if you're a lawyer, you can be a compliance officer. There is a unique skill set around risk management that you need to be a good compliance officer that doesn't necessarily require you to have a law degree. I know people who have operational backgrounds, audit backgrounds, who are fantastic, skilled, respected compliance professionals. So don't think that because you don't have an LLB or law degree or law qualification of some sort that you cannot be in compliance. That is absolutely false. You have what it takes. Just get the skills and the understanding and run with it. The biggest lessons I've had in my career have been that you need to walk into the room knowing and being confident in your abilities and skill set. I will never forget the day I walked into a boardroom and I was the only person in that meeting. It was one of my first days at a new job who looked like me and I was so taken aback, and I just come from Zim where everybody looks like you in the room. I was so taken aback by it, I think it actually showed in my face. And for the rest of that meeting, it kind of overwhelmed and overpowered me, and I could barely say anything. I got over it in the end, but I remember making a conscious decision after that day of just being gobsmacked in that meeting, that from that point onwards, I would walk into every room owning and confident in my skills and ability and who I am. And that is one of the things that have served me very well in life. I may be nervous inside. I might be feeling, you know, a bit nervous about, you know, who's in the room. But I will always walk into the room with that energy of, I know who I am. I know what my skill set is. And I know the value that I'm bringing to the table. And that always serves me well. Another great lesson that has served me very well in my career is ensuring that you spend time understanding everything about the business that you are serving and understanding the laws and the rules that apply to that business and how they work in the context of the specific business that you are in. There is no substitute for spending time to understand the inner workings of a business because you do not operate in compliance as a vacuum. You operate within the context of a business. So there's no substitute for that. Never walk into a new job and start changing things, doing things without that foundational knowledge of understanding the inner workings of the business. So get to know your stakeholders, see how the business operates, what are the platforms that they use? What is the technology that is used to engage with customers that the products are, are sitting in? All of that stuff is invaluable information that you then, after getting a great understanding, go into the business and can start making suggestions about how to manage risk accordingly. I'm inspired by my family. I come from a family of doers, of creators. When I was younger, my father built his mother a house um, and he built it with his two hands all the way from foundation to the roof. Obviously, I was really young at the time. I don't have a context of how long it took, but I know it took a lot of time. I'm not sure what it took for him in terms of sweat, blood, tears, finances. I just saw the house go up, but it did leave a definite impression on me to see him commit to creating something, see it through no matter how hard things may have been, and to be able to build his mother a house. And it just instilled in me that work ethic that you start something and you finish it and creating is something that you can achieve as well. My mother as well is a nurse. She started her career while she was still working full time as a night shift matron. Um, and she did that for almost 20 years, working night shifts at the, at the hospital and during the day running her clinic and also being a mother and a wife. Um, but she built her business successfully and was eventually able to retire um, from the day job uh, or the night job in her case and continue to run her business. And she does that even to this day. So as well, her, she showed me her, worth, her work ethic, her ability to 
put in the hard time and create something for yourself and for your family. And so they both inspired me to be able to, to know that if you put your mind to something, you can create it. And that was one of the foundational things that made me want to start KC Compliance for myself as well. And then being able to demonstrate that for my own children so that they can see that they come from a legacy of people who build and create. And that is the legacy that I want to give them. So I will do it by means of my career in compliance. I'm not expecting them to necessarily be compliance officers, even though my daughter's a big fan of my YouTube channel and tells everybody her mother's a YouTuber in compliance. But whatever they choose to do, my job, my inspiration is to provide that example for them that you can create, you can do, you can work hard, and you'll see the results. So that's what inspires me when the hard days come, when I'm tired and I have to push through. I remember my mother working day shift and night shift. I remember my father building that house from scratch with his two hands, and it keeps me going all the time.